All right, hello everybody. Welcome to Wild West Wednesday. Sorry for the delay. I had to restart my computer and that always takes a longer time than I would prefer. So you know how it goes. Anyway, hello to everyone in the chat. Hello, Electric Dragon UK and Slacks and Pixie Cow and EA Benson and Incog Hero and Cregan and Davor. Ah, it's a person. Yes, it's me. Hello. So I decided to switch it up today and do some animation because I haven't done it in a while and I have a few, well, I have more than a few. I have lots of animations that need to be done. Also, hello Summer B76, who has just redeemed show off a big box game. All right, well, before I get before we get started, take your pick: Sierra, LucasArts, or other. Francisco does what I do; he waves at the screen and not at the camera. Yes. So I, oh hello UK Zarts, UK Z Arts, <laughs> Uck Zarts. I'm sure it's UK Z Arts. My camera is up there on my primary monitor, and my OBS and chat are over here on my second monitor, so that's why I wave. Do you have Callahan's Cross Time Saloon? I don't have... Not even Josh Mandel has Callahan... Well, no, that's not true. I think he does. That's a very rare box. No, I do not have Callahan, Callahan's Cross Time Saloon. I can't even say it right. So, I'm sorry to disappoint you, but I do not have that box. Unless you want me to do, like, an invisible show off a big box game. <laughs> we could do that. While you're deciding, let me uh, go ahead and preemptively switch my tools over here to uh, what I'll be using this stream. LucasArts in honor of Return to Monkey Island. Okay. Well, in honor of Return to Monkey Island, I've already shown... I'm pretty sure I've already shown all of the Monkey Island games, actually. Um. Oh, here we go. <sighs> I've shown off all of my Monkey Island big box games, except for one. Just gotta be like me and have my work on the lap sitting drawing tablet so I only show the crown of my head to chat. Right. This is not really a big box. I mean, it kind of is. Well, it's not. It's not a box at all. It's a DVD. <laughs> it's a DVD slipcover for Tales of Monkey Island with some little paper cutouts on the back. Because the original case is really horrible. Because it's just a bunch of 3D models thrown together. So this is the physical release of Tales of Monkey Island that Telltale put out if you bought Back when they used to do the thing where if you if you paid a little bit of extra money you would get the physical copy. So this has got I mean this hasn't got anything in it except for, you know, the DVD and the little very sparse manual, which has some fun little things in it. So yeah, if you pre-ordered, you got the you got this, but you also got the special oops. You got the special slipcase that was drawn by Steve Purcell, which is infinitely better than than just this horrible thing. So that's why I, I keep it like this. So, there. Hide the art. <laughs> anyway, also hello, uh, Tommy K. Satnav. Yes, it is fugly. That is very true. All right, let me go put this back and we'll get started because we've got a late start. Okay, so, hide the shoddy 3D render, yes, exactly. Alright, so, I'm going to be doing two characters sitting and turning to talk to you. One of them is Jake, and the other one is Danny. So Jake is going to, he's sitting there and he turns around to look at you when you're talking to him, and then he goes back and turns back out to look out the window. This is for when he's on the wagon. I was going to try, I tried to use this standard seating view that I had for him, but I, the head didn't quite fit right, so I decided to go ahead and do a custom, a custom sitting animation for him for the wagon. So, there you go. 
it's not that big a deal because uh, you're not really going to be seeing much of him because he's covered up by the table but first I'm gonna do his hands because those are the things that move the most so let me uh, go ahead and do the hands first and in case you're wondering yes I already tested and measured and made sure that this all worked and fit in the scene so I'm not doing this blindly hoping that it'll fit when I finish it because I've done that before and it has led to tears. So I'm not doing that this time. And yes. So, yeah. I hope everyone is doing well today. Turn off anti alias there. for all of them. It's been a while since I did this, so I forgot my procedure here. So both of these are only seven frames, which means that hopefully I will finish them on stream and I will be able to implement them in the game and we'll be able to see them. And it'll be a nice, productive stream. And then I'll get back to writing <laughs> after I'm done. Because yes, I'm still writing, and it's getting very close to the end of the month, and I'm kind of starting to freak out, because I'm like, uh, I wanted to have this first draft done by the end of April, by which I mean the first draft of the game, and I still have quite a little bit to do, so there's that. I saw someone's marvelous pixel fan art of New Monkey Island before I saw the actual announcement and got so very excited and very sad. <laughs> <laughs> I see. Was it the Twin Peaks one? I saw that one floating around yesterday or the day before. Oh, the, the Monkey Island announcement has been out for a while, so it probably hasn't been that one unless you really haven't been paying attention. Maybe. Hmm. All right. Man, I finished Psychonauts 2 over the weekend, and I really loved it, but I have I have this song stuck in my head, <laughs> and it's annoying me. The three-headed monkey is not what it seems. Yeah, right. Dwarven Jester, thank you. Thank you for the subscription. Appreciate it. Get me those Twitch dollars.
Nope. <laughs> Can't afford to get lazy in the final... The final, uh... Frame here of this animation. Because that's the one you're going to see. Although I don't think you're really going to see the... That hand there, because it's going to be covered by the table that he's sitting at, but... I want to be sure that I'm not cutting any corners, or visibly cutting any corners anyway. I'm already cutting corners by not doing his legs, because I know for a fact that those are going to be covered by the table. Because I looked when I measured, and they were covered by the table, so I figured, well, no need to do his feet. It's only going to make things worse. Alright, so now we'll do the highlights in his hand here. Which is to say his fingers and the top of his hand. So yeah, he's being lit from the front, so we'll just do it this way. And here I thought you just didn't want us to see your fuzzy bunny slippers. I don't have any fuzzy bunny slippers, sadly. I do have some slippers that I got from Muji, but I never wear them. I probably should. Fuzzy slippers rule? Well, I'll have to get some. I wish I had fuzzy bunny ones. <laughs> you could always get some for Easter. I'm sure they're real popular around this time of year. I should wear out my sheep ones first. You have sheep fuzzy slippers. That's a, that's another good one. Bunnies, sheep, those are both fuzzy things that you can put on slippers. just got to do the pants <laughs> or at least part of the pants which aren't going to be too visible I don't think so actually let me check this again against the backdrop this is actually going to go over uh, which is this here so if we just take this copy and then paste it in here let me lower the opacity so I can position him correctly so he's basically going to be sitting here like this well like there like that All right with his with his arm on the the back of the chair there resting on the back of the chair so really his pants are not going to be 
Well, his hand is not going to be visible at all, so I didn't really need to draw his hand. And his pants aren't really going to be visible at all either. So, yeah, in reality, I really only need to... I don't actually need to do his pants. I just need to... I just need to do the the top of the of the coat. So that saves me some work. So let's go ahead and do his uh, his vest here. Because you will see that. Make sure I'm on the right layer here. You need to get some new ones. The last ones I had were comfy, but comfy, but awful build quality. It was like my number one Christmas wish, and I got it. Isn't being an adult great? <laughs> Is he canonically even wearing pants then? That's for me to know, or him to know, and you to find out. Hello, howdy, Casey Adventure. Welcome. I don't know if it counts as not wearing pants if his legs don't exist at all. How am I today? I'm good. I'm just doing some animations uh, for stream, and then I'm going to go back to writing, hopefully finishing up uh, a section that I've been working on for about a few days now. Hopefully finish that up, and uh, then I'll be ever closer to having my first draft of Act 2 finished, which I wanted to have done by the end of uh, February? <laughs> Or was it March? Yeah, February, because I wanted to spend March and April doing Act 3. Um, and I'm very behind. Although I have been doing Act 3, and I don't have a whole lot to do on that one, so... There's that, but yeah. I still want to have the game finished... The first draft of the dialogue written by the end of this month. I don't know if I'll be exactly able to put that pull that off, but no later than like the second week of May because <laughs> I want to cast the game in mid-May and record in June or July which means I have to have a couple of months to uh, edit and finalize the dialogue so that it can be locked in and ready to record so that's that's what I'm looking at for the next couple of months I just finished Pants Quest, where you spend most of the game without pants. <laughs> I see Stan Pants from Monkey Island is making a comeback. Stan Pants from Monkey Island? Stan's previously owned pants? Oh, you mean... <laughs> you mean the fact that he wears checkered pants, and I'm wearing checkered pajama pants. Which I'm currently wearing now. Yes. But he was wearing pantaloons also. I'm I'm just wearing pajama pants. The checkered pants that don't move, right? His coat also doesn't move. So creepy. Is there a cozy wear what you like? I do. 
I have a deadline coming up in June to submit my thesis, which is terrifying. It's good to set deadlines, but not treat it as disastrous if they're missed. That's very true. It's still something that I have to, I have to learn. I mean, Stan's pants in the original game, they just weren't animated, not even a crinkle, but his hands were all over the place, yes. That was always a funny effect, the fact that his checkers were always on a single plane. I can't remember if I remember reading that that was like an accident or something, or some technical limitation or something. Hey, it's Fefe is now following. Thank you for the follow. Hey, it's Fefe. <laughs> and also, first time chat. I enjoy design work. Well, you've come to the right place because, well, actually, I mean, it depends on what you uh, define really as design work because I mostly do art on my streams because I feel like the, uh, sometimes I do coding, but the actual design process and writing and everything I feel is too boring to stream. So I never actually do the, I never do that on stream, but I do art backgrounds and animations and occasional coding which as I said if I figure out or if I finish this animation I'm gonna put it in the game rig it up and all that so I mean I should finish this animation it's only seven frames he said naive naively <laughs> It's funny, the hands thing was just set as the talking animation. Everyone else's mouths move, but Stan's hands went all over the place by default. He's like the best part of that game, yes. Right. You like watching me code? Okay. <laughs> well, I'm glad that my coding gives you some form of entertainment, because it's often a an exercise in frustration for me. Not all the time. Mostly when I'm just trying to figure something out that I can't get get it working or can't figure out how to do it.
So I guess for the benefit of, uh, of Hey It's Fefe, or anyone else, am I pronouncing that correctly? Is it Fefe, or is it Fifi, or... <laughs> I don't want to butcher your online handle. But anyway, for your benefit, and anyone else who might be new, um, I'm gonna go ahead and play the... Either way works, okay. I'm gonna go ahead and play the trailer for Rosewater, which is the game that I'm actually working on, that I'm doing this for. So, uh, yeah, sit back and enjoy the teaser trailer for Rosewater. Tell me, what is it you want out of life? Fortune? Glory? The thrill of adventure? I'm offering you a chance at all three. You just need to do me one small favor. something of a reputation, you know? Clever, resourceful, maybe a little dangerous. I do hope that's accurate. The path won't be straightforward. You'll encounter obstacles along the way, perhaps even some other dangerous people. You'll need some help, but I assure you the rewards far outweigh the risks. You will be richer than you ever thought possible, if you can deliver. in touch. This trailer <laughs> gives him a break from us for a bit too, like when a teacher puts out a, puts a video on for the kids. That's right. That's another thing. And thank you, Fife. <laughs> it's Fife. Thank you, uh, hey, it's Fife. Nice production, really good voice acting. Thank you, thank you. Um, that trailer was put together by Alistair Beckett King. Uh, who you may know for, as the developer of Nelly Kudalot, but you also might know him from his his in quite quickly rising star as a stand-up comedian. He also runs Adventure X, and uh, he also has a background in film and film editing, so he has done the trailers for both Rosewater and Lamplight City. So... Yeah, if you uh, if the game looks interesting, go give it a wish list on Steam. Add it to your wish list on Steam or on GOG, and hopefully it will be out later this year. I'm more of an idle amateur in the realms of number oh number theory. Yes, the interdimensional ABK. That's the one. I'm not getting involved in a number theory conversation. That is way outside the scope of my knowledge and understanding. <laughs> you guys talk amongst yourselves. folks talk amongst yourselves. Stand-up comedy. I would love to listen to some outside the stream. Can you link me his name? Uh, can someone else do that? Please? <laughs> um, Alistair Beckett King. He does a lot of, uh, he does a lot of short videos that he posts to Twitter. In fact, he just did one today about street magicians and the reactions of British people versus Americans. There you go. Thanks, Pixie Cow. But yes, he is quite talented and quite funny. And a very nice guy as well. seeing him tomorrow. Oh, cool. My partner is giggling and gigging. I thought I read that as giggling. My partner is gigging alongside him, which is cool. That is pretty cool. All right, so now for this bit, actually, let me uh, open up this here and make sure that this is going to be okay. Uh, 
Oh, he needs buttons and also a belt. <laughs> or does he? Wait, what happened here? Oh, right, because I cut out his head. Alright, so if I place this here, and I have this as his sort of baseline for his head in this frame, will his side diagonal head fit here, is the question. Yes, but I need to draw his, uh, I need to draw underneath because otherwise it's going to look weird. So that's good. I just need to uh, fix it so that we can see that his neck is not all weirded out. This is fine because his head is actually going to be above the th above his uh, neck. Okay, cool. All right, so that's going to be a fun that's going to be a fun coding challenge to place his head in the correct position once it's actually once I rig it up here. So let's get rid of his head here <laughs> for a minute and uh, fix this. And we need actually two versions of this because one version with the head that's part of the animation where he turns around and one version without the head which is when he speaks. So I'm going to go ahead and finish up this frame because this is our final frame and it needs to be in the right spot for it to work. So let's just leave that for now. I've already got this bit. So just do this here. Make sure we get everything else looking good first. ABK was a model in this game too. That's right. Yes, he is one of the <laughs> he's one of the characters in close up for one of the cutscenes. He very kindly uh, modeled for me. <laughs> he is not the model for the for the full view of him though, but. The character, I, the way I designed the character, I was like, this guy kind of looks like Alistair. Let me see if Alistair wants to be him in, in the close-up. And he agreed. So that was fun. Hey, it's A Maple Mystery. Yeehaw! Hello, A Maple Mystery. Nice dolphin. <laughs> Alright, I need 
need to be consistent here with my uh, with my coat. And true to my word, a maple mystery, I am in fact animating a character. <laughs> I'm not designing a character. I was gonna do. I was gonna do a, a design a whole new character today, but then I realized that the only one I could think of that I could do uh, is for a scene that I've written but hasn't been edited yet. So I want to make sure that everything is final before I start designing the character and their animations and all that stuff. Because if anything changes and I have extra art I've already done, it's it's a lot harder to justify making those changes when I'm just like, oh, but I already animated him walking, or, and he doesn't walk, or whatever. <laughs> so, there's that. Um, okay, I'm gonna do this here, because this is gonna be the interior of the coat. And this is the exterior of the coat. Let's give him a little shadow underneath his hand here because his hand will be casting a shadow. So there you go. Alright. And yes, for those of you who may not know, A Maple Mystery is Julia Minamata, who is working on a game called The Crimson Diamond, which is an EGA text parser mystery inspired by The Colonel's Bequest. And she streams every Tuesday at 8.30, no, 8 p.m. Eastern. And uh, it's unofficially called Crimson Tuesday, but it's really just Tuesday. <laughs> Tuesday stream. Oops. Okay. So there we go. That is the... That is the final shot for... The final stance for this character here in this position. Let me give him his highlights, and then I'll add the extra details that are missing, like the belts. Even though I think it's probably going to be under the table also, so I'll I'll check real quick against the background again to see if I have to bother doing the belts, because I might not have to. But this is good that I have this, because now I can actually see how the, the sprite itself will look, or will fit into the background. certain yes that this gets highlighted this way and this gets highlighted this way and this because it's being hit by light will get a lot more highlights on this side even though we're not going to see that bit but who cares I like consistency Consistency is key to something. <laughs> okay, so this goes down to here. Save that, and let's select all this and put it in. I don't have that open, right? No. Let's open recents. Here we go. All right, so this is going to go. You know what? Just for the sake of it, let's turn his head back on and just get the whole character in here. Yeah, and 
recipe is going to be pretty much like this. So yeah, he's going to be he's going to have his arm there, and he's behind the table, so we're not going to see most of him. So really, I don't really think. I mean, I guess I could do his belt because he's going to be covered up by some of the table, but not all of the table. So I guess I could do his belt for just for completionist purposes, but he's going to be hidden behind most of this anyway. Oh, hello. Uh, sorry, I've been <laughs> I've been looking away. Let's catch up on chat. Uh, it's going well. Chapter 5 of my game is going well. That's good. Gorgeous looking game. Very hyped for it. If you're talking about the Crimson Diamond, yes, that is true. I agree. If you're talking about Rosewater, then thank you. But I'm sure you're talking about the Crimson Diamond. Yes, you are. Chapter 5 of how many? Chapter 5 of 7. Nice. You got all the little custom icons. Hello, Sven Matthias. Welcome. Um... All right, so where will we'll, so yeah, so what I was saying was I I do actually need to do the belt <laughs> because from his front stand, standing sprite, actually I should also do his little buttons on his vest because from his front standing sprite, his belt is gonna kind of go this way. So I the good thing is I only really have to do one of his belts. So, but I want to uh, I want to be consistent again. Consistency being key. So, let me get these buttons in place here. First of all, let me unmerge down so I don't have that problem. But here we go. So, his first button's up here. One, two, three, four, five. Five of them, okay. One, two, a two. A three. A three. <laughs> Pardon me for making dumb references. Oh, I don't care. I like making dumb references. Okay, so we'll squish that down. Let's put these in all of the subsequent panels. A one. A two. A three. It's too low. All right. Paste, paste, paste. Grunislav, your game is looking sweet. Thank you. So is yours. There's a lot of really nice looking adventure games that are coming out soon or soon-ish. I feel like the level of quality has increased pretty much across the board in like the solo indie s dev scene, which is good. I still need to play Perfect Tides. <laughs> Excuse me. You know, uh, one of the things I've been thinking about, um, which I'm kind of putting together a talk about um, casting union actors in your project, and I'm going to submit it to AdventureX, see if they accept it. Um, but one of the things I think that is a, a sort of a, a, a hurdle for most people is like, well, but I'm making this low-res game in 2D, like, 
What if it sounds better than it looks? Which is a thing I've heard said before. And I feel like as long as it looks good, <laughs> you know, as long, even if it's like 320 by 200, as long as the art is, is good and consistent, like, because you look at games like King's Quest VI and Gabriel Knight 1 that had these amazing casts of Hollywood voiceover talent in Quest for Glory 4 also and they were 320 by 200 but of course you know they were good looking 320 by 200 like Ben Jordan 1 would not have looked good <laughs> but games like the ones that the, with the visuals of like a lot of the games that are coming out now I feel like you don't have to worry about the whole looking better than or sounding better than it looks issue so oh Thank you, Big K69er, for the subscription. I still need to play Perfect Tides. Yes, you do, and you speak for everyone who has not yet done so, yes. This month's accent is your choice. Quick question. Who would be your fantasy dinner guests, but finish your story first? <laughs> uh, what are the requirements? Are my fantasy dinner guests anyone at, from any time, or do they have to be alive now? My game is 320 by 200. Yes, and your game looks amazing. So if you could, you could, if you could, uh, get, if you vo decided to voice your game, you could voice your game. <laughs> one dead, one alive. Ooh, ooh. Well, I'm gonna say alive, Christopher Walken, and dead, rest in peace, Gilbert Gottfried, who we just lost yesterday, tragically. I struggle to think of a game I've played lately that looked bad. Well, that's good. Ah. <clears throat> okay, so now that we've got this, let me go ahead and do the belt. The belt, which... If he's sitting like this, his belt would be like this, I think. You know what? I'm going to do his belt. Wait, I did do his belt on the wrong layer. <laughs> Let's do his belt on another layer, which is here. And then I can do a naughty little trick, which is the following. Which is, put his belt here, and do that, and then get his buckle from this. Shh, don't tell anybody I'm doing this. Copy his buckle, paste it here. Yes, yes, good. <laughs> and then, just do this, and get his... Make sure that the the border of the belt here is dark, right? Okay, and then this is what we do now. Select all, copy, and then just paste it into the other ones and no one will be the wiser. Ah, ah, ah. <laughs> Except that's too low. It's also too low. But see, the belt will move along with his, with his clothes. Oh my god, this is a lot of text. Uh, I'm so looking forward to your game too. I've been following the development for so long and I'm happy about every progress. Thank you for your transparency. You and also Grunislav give such a great insight into the creation of such games with such streams and information. Many people don't realize how much work is behind such a game, especially when you do almost everything on your own. Well said, Sven Matthias. You'd have Robin Williams and Ricky Gervais. Interesting. Some good looking games are probably better unvoiced. Yes. Daniel Mullins makes excellent use of no voice acting approach. Nice. So dastardly to copy the belt that is meant to be the same belt. You're a madman. Yes, I know. I'm I'm just drunk with power. Ah 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 ah. <laughs> that was a terrible cackle. <clears throat> All right. So now we're going to move oops. I'm going to move this a little bit further this way. And when it begins to 
Honestly, it doesn't matter that it's covering the hand because you're not going to see the hand because the hand is under the table. So, I don't care about this so much. But I do care about this. So, let's do that. Yes. And then here. Here, and I erase this. And again, you're not going to even see this, but I wanted to. <laughs> I want to know for my own peace of mind that it looks believable. I bet you in the end you're not even going to see the belt in any of the frames, but I'd rather be safe than sorry. Let me test out my theory here <laughs> and see if you can even see the belt. Excuse me. Also, if the belt is here, it needs to be. The highlight can't be there because the belt would be obstructing it. So. Okay, let's try that again. All right, so. Uh, select all and copy and forget that and let's go back over to wagon interior and paste you over you there get rid of you yeah okay so you will see it like a tiny tiny bit so in this frame yeah okay it's important to be there, but <laughs> you're not going to see it in any of the other frames, so I'm not too concerned about that. All right, so now, um, now it's just uh, doing his shirt and also his, uh, which I'm going to do backwards so that I can make sure that it's consistent with this. So his shirt is actually going to go sort of this way. Uh, I have to pay attention now because I have to make sure that it's... Oh yeah, also I wanted to... I need to merge the belt down in all of these other ones because I don't want to have a separate layer floating around for no reason. Trying to work, but cat's too cute. That That's why I come and do my work in the basement. Because my cats are upstairs. And I know that they would be big distractions if they were down here. Now for this one, this one's going to be interesting because I'm going to use the side view of his head. But I'm also going to... I'm also going to have to use his... Uh, well, nope, wrong one. <laughs> I mean, it goes there, but it's not the right thing. So let's go here and paste his head here. <laughs> Excuse me. So his head's going to be here. Which means that yeah, his shirt Oh no, I didn't mean to do that. 
There we go. His shirt needs to line up with the neck, but it also needs to be... Poor babies. <laughs> what, your cats or mine? This, I'm just gonna do this. Say, all right, this is. This is where his shirt is. And I guess I can do a sort of uh, rather than that, it'll just be a sort of a his shirt is coming this way thing. that on the wrong layer that's why okay well no worries because actually no no definitely worries definitely worries because this is one of those cases where the head does not go here when he's idle so I gotta cut and paste this Ambrosine, thank you for the subscription. Sorry, I missed that. My cat is so talkative, I couldn't speak for five minutes without her commenting with a, with some meow. Nice. Mine waits patiently for about five minutes, then waits, un waits unpatiently, poking my leg with his claws until he gets my attention. That's cats for you. That sounds very familiar. <laughs> okay, so now I'm going to do this backwards. And I'm going to say... Uh, oh, well, hold on. This... That happened. Save, go back here, back to here. Mm. But if you'll notice, my vest here. <laughs> Let's do this. Let's. Let's do this again and paste this over here. So that it just kind of sidles over a little bit. But then this here. Oops. And this here just kind of goes away. This also kind of goes away, but just enough so that it does not go completely away. So now we can do this and this and sort of this. pay attention here because the the vest is clearly a lot higher than I drew it so it's got to come up to like here now
What is your process for creating the base character design? Their face clothes, is it from reference or thin air? Um, it depends. I mean, when I'm thinking, when I come up with a character in my head, I don't really have a clear idea of what they're going to look like. But then as I write them and I figure out, you know, what their, what their actions are going to be in the game and everything, then I'm like, okay, well, I guess I can sort of visualize them. And then when it comes time to actually design them, usually if it's, you know, if it's a male character, I'll pose for them. And so I'll just come up with a basic idea of the clothes they're wearing and sort of dress like that as best I can. And then just kind of as I'm doing it, as I'm painting it, I come up with the colors and the, the sort of overall design of the clothes and everything until I come up with something that I like. And sometimes it's, it's based on reference if it's like, you know, imitating some real life look that I'm going for. So, you know, I look at a lot of like, for these games, I look at a lot of 19th century fashion and stuff like that. Um, and for others, it's just random stuff that I come up with. So it's a little bit of both, I guess. Hopefully we're about to get a Grunislav rendition of Thrift Shop. I did not get this coat that I have at a thrift shop. I got it at a store. I mean, at like an actual full price store. Um, and it was a great investment because not only is it a great coat, but I've also used it for many, many things. This is, of course, the coat that Miles Fordham wears in Lamplight City. And it's also the coat that Gentleman Jake wears. Obviously different colors and slightly different renditions of it, but overall it's the same uh, same reference material. <laughs> so I hope that's not too big a jump, but we'll see. Nah, it's not too big a jump. I mean, it is too big a jump because that appears there, but we'll get there. As soon as I finish drawing the rest. Do any of you still know Conquest of the Longbow, The Legend of Robin Hood? I'm playing it right now and I love it, even though it's not that well known. But that nostalgia and the backgrounds, character designs, and portraits are so beautiful. Only the puzzles are, well, let's say they're not among the highlights of the game. I love Conquest of the Longbow. I agree, it is a bit of copy protection, the game. There are lots of uh, lots of puzzles that require you to consult the, the manual. But I really love Conquest of the Longbow. In fact, Conquest of the Longbow is one of the biggest influences on the gameplay of Rosewater as far as like how the different choices you make affect the story and things like that. So I recently, well recently, within the past three years, replayed Conquest of the Longbow to get some, uh, some inspiration for Rosewater. And yeah, I think it's one of the most underrated and best uh, of the Sierra VGA era games. Don't say one from Rosie, but what's your best puzzle that you came, you've you come up with? Uh, huh. I was actually particularly proud of one puzzle that I came up with for a game that I never released, which I then recycled for Ben Jordan 5. And that's the puzzle where you have to get the signature of a character. And in order to do, you have to get them to sign a form for you. But in order to get their, they refuse to sign it. So you have to find another document with their signature on it and then lay it on top of the other one and forge the signature. I always was kind of a fan of that. <laughs> And that was like one of the puzzles that I came up with on my own that I didn't really draw from anywhere else. Because I'm pretty sure I did that as a kid. <laughs> like when I got 
when it was like, you failed the test, take this home to sign. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I forged my mom's signature on at least one occasion. I hope she's not watching. She's not watching. Um, this is my fave. My jam from Adventure X was heavily inspired by it. Oh, right, yeah. I haven't played Longbow, but I hear great things. I love Conquest of Camelot. Yes. Conquest of Camelot is good. Is the, char the chalkboard in shard light, isn't it, ducks? Well, I actually didn't come up with that puzzle. That was Ben Chandler. That was all Ben Chandler. That was one of the two puzzles that he came up with and coded all by himself. The other one being the, the one with the blackboard with the strings. Ben has always been way more of a, a puzzle design guy than I have. Also, the Conquest of the Longbow Handbook has a lot of fun dev comments. Nice. The Blackboard was great. Stumped me. Well, thank Ben for that. Or blame him, depending on your <laughs> feelings towards that puzzle. I know a lot of people got stuck on that one, and it was like one of the earliest, most challenging puzzles. The first part of the puzzle was easy, but the combination of letters took me hours to figure out. Yeah, you know, I think, I feel like this, that was one of those cases where, I still have it here somewhere. I feel like the clues were a little too obtuse. Like, it could have been fixed with a really simple fix. Here, close-ups should be here. Unless it's under books, which I doubt. But yeah, here we go, books. Art book, book cover one, page left, philosophy, history. Now these are the... I don't think we have calligraphy. The calligraphy is under inventory, I think. Chalkboard puzzle pegs, cipher note, what's cipher note? Oh right, cipher note was that. Calligraphy, here we go. Back cover, front cover, K, 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 M, M, M. Right, there was one thing in particular, this one, K5. The biggest clue here was this, where what this is supposed to indicate to you here is that you draw the letter and the squares that are covered by any piece of the letter should be blacked out and the remaining letters here are what you should read. But I feel like the letters being spaced out too much. So if we had done this instead and done like, let's do the background here so it actually, if the clue had been something, oops, <laughs> let's do this. If it had been like W, O, R, if it had been sequential, right? Or if it, even if it had been down here, if it had been just like. This is way too long for, taking way too long for just an example. Even, even if it had just been something like this, where it was like word down here in sequence, I feel like it would have been a lot more apparent how you were supposed to read it once the lines were there. So, yeah, anyway. 
What stumped you was getting the chalk in the first place. Yeah, a lot of people missed that hot spot of the bell. That background went through so many iterations. I wonder if I have the original iterations here. Final scenes. Oh, bizarre. Here we go. Yeah, here we go. So many. Look at all of these different iterations. <laughs> Six versions of them. So let's see. No Hitler allowed. <laughs> New billboard. I don't even know what that means. Meaty. Higher viz. Bizarre. Okay, so this was the first version of it. This was the first version of the of the bazaar, where it was just kind of the bazaar, and then. <laughs> okay, so I, I no Hitler allows because there's a shadow underneath the statue's nose, and it kind of looks like a Hitler mustache. <laughs> so then, second version was called "No Hitler Allowed," where he fixed that, and then there was also meaty, which I guess he added those chunks of meat to the yeah this was the second iteration where he added those chunks of meat to the the stand here where the chicken was where gus is so then after that was no hitler allowed because we got rid of the mustache <laughs> so then there was also the bell which the original version of the bell as you can see here is just a bell with the pole so we had to make it higher visibility because people were not seeing it. So he added these stripes to the bell pole, which still didn't let people see it. So that was a challenge. And then new billboard, which I guess, I don't know what the new bill. Oh, right. Then we put, we had to add the little billboard here for Clem to, with a shard on it to let you know that you could go inside this alley because people didn't know that this was an exit either. So yeah. And then higher viz, I guess is just, Made, he made the bell higher visibility so that you could see that it was a bell. So, yeah. Not having played this game, what on earth am I looking at? Uh, this is a giant scrolling screen of a bazaar in a post-apocalyptic wasteland town. That's what you're looking at. So, there you go. Anyway. Quite a nomenclature. Yeah, Ben, ben names his files, interestingly. <laughs> And he doesn't do like me where I just override, overwrite things. He saves a separate version for every iteration. So you get every single one, which I guess for, for preservation purposes is good, <laughs> but it's not good for clutter purposes. Oh, sure, no problem, Sven Matthias. I'm sure I've got plenty of others. I haven't looked at the shard light assets in a really long time, obviously. But I'm sure there's plenty of interesting stuff in there. Excuse me. <laughs> I remember before when I was like, oh, I bet I'll finish these animations on stream. What a naive, sweet summer child. Sometimes I forget how long these animations take. That being said, I will be very happy when I get back to just doing just doing animations. Because I am so, so ready to be finished with writing. You have no idea. Alright, so now let me go back and oh no, now I have to go back and do the coat or do the shirt rather. That's not so bad.
this needs, I think, a little bit more oomph. <laughs> By which I mean, he has to see, we have to see the side of his shirt here, because otherwise it's going to look weird. Doesn't need to be highlighted, but close enough. Uh... Oh, I see. I typed that while Logature was on screen. Chat for me is delayed by like 120 seconds. Well, that sucks. Was it actually a clear decision not to accompany the spoken dialogues in games with animated mouth movements? I can imagine that would have been a lot of extra work. Uh, yes, that was a thing. Um, Dave was very adamant about having still portraits. I've always liked animated portraits myself, but it is a, it is extra work, especially if you're going to lip sync them, as I found out with Lamplight City. So um, Dave did not want to have animated portraits, which was fine because I wasn't, I mean, it wasn't any extra work for me, but it would have been extra work for, uh, for Ivan, the portrait artist. So, but personally, I would have, if it had been my decision, I would have animated the mouths because I prefer to have animated portraits. That's why I asked, because I think it works great in Lamplight City, my favorite game of yours so far, if I may say so myself. Well, thank you. Hopefully Rosewater will be better. <laughs> But yeah, I mean, I knew that if I was going to be doing a detective game where the primary focus was on the faces, their lips had to move, and also they had to be lip synced. <laughs> and that ended up creating a lot of extra work for me, but I think it was worth it in the end. Which is why I'm so much happier to have found uh, Rhubarb, which is the lip sync program I'm going to be using for Rosewater, which automates the process and cuts down on the hassle significantly, so. Hooray for rhubarb, is what I'm saying. Would you do a futuristic game set in that same universe? No, I don't think so. I'm not really into the future stuff. As is obvious, I'm more into the past stuff. <laughs> so. Also, Sven Matthias has. Sven Matthias did not work on Lamplight City. I was just playing it, but I'm actually a voice actor for computer games and radio plays, but only in Germany. Cool. Shardlight was future, though. 
Uh, yeah, Shardlight was future, but, I mean, there was also the whole thing with, like, the aristocracy and everything. It was future, but based a future where society rebuilt itself to sort of mirror the past. So, like, there wasn't really any, like, future technology or anything in Shardlight, aside from maybe, like, the Ministry of Medicine stuff, but... And yeah, Charlotte was not set in the same universe as uh, Lamplight City and Rosewater, so. Would you do a spooky game? Hello, Octorob. I would, yeah. Actually, I've been thinking one of my ideas that I've had for another game set in this universe would be like a gothic horror game set in this universe. But I haven't really given it too much thought. Guillotine punk, yes. People usually only say if I may say so myself as an admission of chauvinistic bias. <laughs> this art is great and I'm not just saying that because I made it right. Please do gothic horror. I'd like to, I'd like to. We'll see, we'll see uh, how things go. All right, so we got, we got this so far. Now it's time for the coat, and then the animation will be done. So once again, I'm going to work backwards, although I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this bit first, because it's the start frame, and I want to get the start frame and the end frame done properly. Again, this doesn't even matter because you're not going to see it. You're not going to see most of it. But I still want to get it looking decent enough for the part that you do see. werewolves and such nah I wouldn't do I don't think I would do werewolves like creatures if I was to do like a spooky horror game I think I'd probably do more in the realm of like supernatural ghost sort of thing because that's the kind of that's the sort of supernatural thing that's always interested me I've never really been into vampires or werewolves or things of that nature But I have always liked ghosts. Of course, how do you do a, an indie adventure game about ghosts without being inevitably compared to <laughs> Blackwell? That's the question. to Gabriel Knight. Yeah, that's true. Although Gabriel Knight was a lot more like creature of the week, essentially. Or to Ben Jordan. That's true. Ben Jordan also had ghosts. Or at least it had one about a ghost. So I guess I could just go back to my roots.
let's fix this here because this is a little too much. So he's just sort of hanging out, <laughs> very casual like. What if, what I'd, what if, you, what if using ethericity sets ghosts loose? It's funny because there is a, <laughs> there's a little sub, not subplot, but there's a, there's a bit in Rosewater where there's a character who thinks that a place is haunted because they've been seeing strange lights and hearing strange noises. <laughs> and it's not ghosts, it's ethericity. So maybe. It's the ghost punk Victorian urban center and blades in the dark. Duskval. Okay. Interesting. All right, I was going to do this backwards. <laughs> Very sun the sea kind of vibe. Isn't Bill a kind of ghost? Well, it depends on... It depends. <laughs> on whether you think Bill is actually a ghost or if he's just a voice in Miles' head. I mean, spiritualism was definitely a thing in the 19th century, and I definitely ran with that, as you saw with the Spectre Society. But the problem with stories like that is you have to bring something new to the table because even if it's just like, you know, if it's a flat out ghost story, okay, and then like you establish the ghosts are real, that's one thing. But then if you do the whole, oh no, it was just all in, it, was, it wasn't really a ghost story, it was just in the person's head, you have to make it interesting because then that also can feel like a cop out unless it's done really well. So... You all can feel free to speculate. But I will not say. Obviously, I have my own head canon of what it was, but. And that is for me. It's 
for me to know and for you to speculate on. Specifically a coal revival in the 19th century headcanon, but well unlike anyone else's headcanon yours is official So ambiguity is underrated. I feel too often shows etc. Have to explain things when they don't have to yes Keep it safe. Like what is the secret of my? <laughs> I don't think anyone cares that much about Lamplight City The secret is that there is no secret the secret is the friends we made along the way I mean, the only thing, I prefer to leave it ambiguous. The only instance in where it would actually make a difference was if, like, you know, I sold the IP rights to somebody and they decided to make a, another Lamplight City and they said, well, definitively, um, well, I mean, if I sold the IP rights, they could do whatever they wanted, let's be honest. But, you know, that would be the only case where it was like, well, this is not officially what my explanation was or anything like that so we care oh <laughs> well sure it's always nice to have it all written down for your own purposes and reference Is too much of a jump.
It's been a while since I saved, so I should save. Okay, so... A little bit more. I'm hoping that the new Monkey Island will bring a bit of point-and-click adventure games back into focus. A little bit more in the mainstream. Just good games. Complete games without microtransactions, loot boxes, and season pass. Yeah, I mean, I, I also hope that maybe it'll, you know, for the people who grew up playing point-and-click adventure games who um, maybe have not been aware of the indie scene of the past few years, maybe it'll give them... Maybe it'll, you know, open their eyes to that. But I'm not really expecting, like, you know, your average gamer now who only plays, like, Fortnite or whatever to suddenly be interested in point-and-click adventure games. That's not going to happen. Um, but, I mean, hopefully it'll get a little bit more, a few more eyes on, on the indie scene, at the very least. I'd be under the impression that point and clicks were dead until about 2011 or so when I very excitedly read an article about Gemini Root. I'm sure you're right about that, I feel so old. So long as it isn't as badly received as the King's Quest came from 2014. Well... <laughs> the thing about the King's Quest game from 2014 was that it was made by completely different people. So, I mean, at least Monkey Island, Return to Monkey Island, the whole appeal of it is the fact that it's Ron Gilbert doing another Monkey Island game. I fully expect that there's going to be people who are going to be disappointed in it no matter what, because it's however many years of built-up expectation that's never going to meet the, the standards of certain people, which sucks but it is understandable i mean i the burden of expectation is huge on that game so i don't uh i don't envy them that but you know as long as it's a fun game and it's cool and it's in the spirit of monkey island you know that's all that matters and as long as it's the game that ron gilbert wanted to make And that's the important thing. My first game was Maniac Mansion on the C64. Wow. A few dozen think pieces on what happened to adventure games since Grim Fandango would be nice. <laughs> I do strongly prefer new IPs to trying to resurrect something from the 1990s. Me too. But hey, no matter what you do, people are going to compare it to the games that are from the 90s. Anything over 320 by 200 is automatically going to remind them of Broken Sword. Anything under that is automatically going to remind them of King's Quest and Monkey Island. And that's all you got. <laughs> and it's the truth. I've been dealing with this for many years. It's the truth. It will definitely be better than Monkey Combat could ever be. Yeah, hopefully. Oh dear. Monkey Combat. That was dumb.
As a primarily rigging animator, it amazes me. It amazes me you have the patience for this. <laughs> it amazes me too. But I always feel like the results are worth it, so that's why I stick with it. As long as it doesn't have the ending that Ron Gilbert wanted to make, the man is like the J.J. Abrams of point and clicks. <laughs> I mean, if it has the ending that he wanted to make, isn't that the whole point? The whole thing being that, you know, he wasn't involved in any of the following of the sequels following it, so he didn't get to finish his story. So if he gets to finish his story, it, I mean, if we all think it sucks, then that really doesn't... It's irrelevant because it's his story and how he wanted to end it, so. I mean, that being said, you know, I thought the ending of Thimbleweed Park was terrible, so I hope he doesn't go with that again. But, we'll see. Anyway, I, I vowed that I wouldn't get involved in the in the discourse over Return to Monkey Island. I just want to play it and enjoy it and, you know, I don't want to speculate about it or talk about it or whatever. Because <laughs> there's no point. The important thing is that it's coming and hopefully it'll be good. I know a few people who are working on it and they say that it's good, so I trust them. The ending's gonna be a classic drop to the DOS prompt. <laughs> yeah, probably. It'll probably end with LeChuck and Guybrush, and LeChuck will be like, Haha, you fool, Threepwood, let me tell you the secret of Monkey Island is... And then cut, drop to DOS prompt. And that's how it ends. <laughs> it's all just one big troll from the man. Never expected a new Monkey Island. Never. Now a new Gabriel Knight and I'm happy, but I think Jing Jensen just can't get on such a project. Can't get such a project financed anymore. Nope, I don't think so either. That's new Gabriel Knight's probably never gonna happen. Which is a shame because obviously the last one ended on a sort of a cliffhanger. So it would be nice to get a resolution to that story, but
Depends on how sincere Microsoft CEO was concerning stuff like the Sierra IPs. <laughs> yeah, I guess that's true. I forgot about that, actually. I mean, if Disney will license the Monkey Island IP, who knows? Anything's possible. sneeze. Excuse me. Mobius wasn't that good, unfortunately. Yeah, Mobius was subpar, unfortunately. I think between that and the Gabriel Knight remaster not being so well received, it's kind of what drove her back into retirement from game design, which is a shame, but understandable. turning of course I need to put the highlights in his head in for this to be actually a decent looking animation but speaking of Jane did anyone read any more John Locke oh god I'd forgotten about that actually <laughs> good old John Locke slash fiction alright let's finish this up with some highlights and also some head <laughs> placement the first save this one actually does not need the background anymore because it's done same with this well actually no this needs the highlights but let's go let's work backwards here again
All right. Ah, I would prefer to retain my eyesight. Well, folks, I'm going to call the stream here because I've been going for a little over two hours and I'm hungry. And I didn't finish my animations, but I will finish my animations off stream. And I also need to finish some writing. So I got a lot of stuff to do. But thank you for keeping me company. Um, I will see you next week on Wild West Wednesday. In the meantime, thank you all for your attendance and your subscriptions and your follows and whatnot. Uh, and yeah, I will see you next time. Enjoy your weekends. Bye.